In 2009 and 2010, the polycarbonate MacBook was one of the most popular Macs out there. It was renowned for its budget-oriented price and its fun and quirky design. But how does it hold up 10 years later? Okay, so right off the bat, I have a bubble to burst. The white plastic MacBook, which was long renowned for being the budget MacBook, was not that cheap. When it was new, it cost $999, which is $1,171 today. So it was the budget MacBook at the time, but it's not like they're way more expensive nowadays. Anyway, the MacBook was hugely popular because it was essentially a MacBook Pro with a cheaper housing. The MacBook had the same specs as the base model 13-inch MacBook Pro, but had less RAM as standard. It had the same resolution display, same multi-touch trackpad, even the same rated battery life. The only difference was trading the aluminum unibody for a polycarbonate one, and you gave up a backlit keyboard. It was essentially a less pretty version of the MacBook Pro for $200 less, so for a lot of people it was a no-brainer. And in fact, today the benefits are much the same. A nice 2009 unibody MacBook Pro will run you about $175, whereas I paid just 90 bucks for this MacBook. The one that I bought is a 2009, the older of the two unibody polycarbonate MacBooks. It has a 2.26 GHz Core 2 Duo, GeForce 9400M graphics, a 250 GB hard drive, and initially 2 GB of RAM, though mine was upgraded to 4. Now here's the curious part. A 2009 MacBook Pro can run up to macOS El Capitan officially but the polycarbonate MacBook, even though it has the exact same hardware, can run High Sierra. Now, likely the reason for this is because the white MacBook was very popular in education markets, so it was able to get supported for a lot longer. But the real question is, why the heck was the 2009 MacBook Pro dropped if it has the exact same specs? Clearly this was just an arbitrary decision designed to force people to upgrade if they had those older machines. So, how well does this old beast run 10 years later? Honestly, it's surprising how much functionality it retains, but it definitely feels limited because of the slow hard drive and the limited 4GB of RAM. Fortunately, for not a lot of money, we can change that. Upgrading the hard drive and RAM in a 2009 Apple MacBook is a great way to modernize and reuse an old laptop computer. Assembly starts by simply unscrewing the 10 case screws and removing the bottom panel. A worker removes the existing RAM modules with the clips on the sides and replaces them with two 4GB DIMMs for a total of 8GB. The worker removes the two Phillips head screws securing the hard drive mounting bracket and removes the hard drive from its bay. He unscrews the four T6 mounting screws that he'll need for the new hard drive. Once the screws are transferred, the new solid state drive is plugged into the MacBook and the mounting bracket is replaced. Once the back panel is reattached, the computer is ready to go. With 8 gigs of RAM and a solid state drive, this little MacBook feels brand new, and it's so cheap and easy to upgrade these components. A 120 gig SSD costs 20 bucks, and 8 gigabytes of RAM about the same, so all in we're looking at $130 for this fully functional MacBook. But I'm not satisfied with just running High Sierra. That's two years outdated at this point. So we're gonna use the DOS Dude 1 Catalina Patcher to update this to the most current version of macOS. Upgrading your polycarbonate MacBook to macOS Catalina is a very simple process. To start, simply boot your computer into recovery mode and open terminal. Here you'll type CSR Util Disable to disable system integrity protection. Next, restart your computer and open the patcher. This, <clears throat> anyway, the patcher is going to run you through whether you have downloaded Catalina or not, and you simply have to choose install to this machine, click start, enter your password, 
And at this point, the patch tool is going to make a custom version of the Catalina installer that isn't going to check if your computer is eligible or not. At this point, it's gonna open up the installer and you can install macOS Catalina just like you would on a legitimately supported Mac. With Catalina installed on this machine, it honestly runs like a new computer. You're really not missing out on a lot of functionality here, either over the more expensive contemporary MacBook Pro or even a much newer MacBook, to be honest. No doubt, there are a few downsides that you'll run into on devices like this. The most noticeable is the display. It's the same panel as on other unibody 13-inch Pros of this era, and it's the main sticking point of these devices. It's just not that pleasant to look at, and the viewing angles are not fantastic. Also, the design is definitely becoming retro cool, but as the years have passed, it's clear to see why this was the last plastic MacBook Apple made. The shiny finish is easily scratched and scuffed, and once worn in, the surface shows dirt and grime extremely clearly. And the downside of a plastic design is the housing tends to crack instead of dent, and there were weak points where the display hinge met the lid, so cracks can form up the side of the lid just from normal use. Also, the bottom case is rubberized instead of having separate little feet, which means it picks up dirt and scrapes and crap so fast. Mine is absolutely nasty, and I've seen them a lot worse than this. The rubber bottom case was so bad that Apple actually had a repair program, one of their first repair programs for the Mac, because the rubber would peel and come off. So basically, the design was cool, but not super durable. Apart from these downsides, I genuinely do like the look of this MacBook. It's a little bit thick, but apart from that, it's a very cool design and it definitely improved on the squared off design the late iBooks and early MacBooks shared. On a purely functional level, there's no reason why you couldn't use this MacBook 10 years on. It has most of the basic functionality you'd expect from macOS, such as iMessage and iCloud, though unfortunately we don't have AirDrop and Handoff due to the older networking card. Everything else works just as it would on a newer Mac. Even though it's not supported, the patched Catalina runs perfectly well. It's stable and it doesn't feel any slower than older operating systems. I often get asked if a certain operating system will slow down a machine of a certain vintage. And honestly, if you've upgraded the RAM and put in an SSD, these decade old machines don't have a problem running the latest OSs. In terms of just smoothness and functionality, an SSD is the most important upgrade that you can give an older Mac of any sort. Once that's done, obviously the main limitation here is going to be the CPU and the graphics. We can't really change anything there and it shows. You'd have a tough time playing games or doing any CPU intensive tasks on a machine of this age. I mean, look at Cinebench R20. It takes nearly 20 minutes to run, and when it does, you get a score of just 252. Here's where it falls compared to other Macs. Yikes. This shouldn't be a surprise though. You're not buying or restoring a MacBook of this age to edit 4K HDR content. The other tasks, browsing the web, sending emails, buying MacBooks on eBay, is that, is that just me? and watching YouTube videos, it does just as well as a much more powerful, much more expensive MacBook. Essentially, what we have here is a macOS Chromebook. It's very clearly limited, but it runs fine and it does basic tasks just like any other device. And for $130, it's a very compelling proposition. The thing is, we're in a new era of computer technology where old devices can be useful for years and years and years. It wasn't like that 10 years ago, but a 2010 MacBook in 2020 is totally doable. So that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. As usual, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions either in the comments below or on my subreddit, which you'll find linked in the description. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter at LukeMiani. 
And with that, I'll see you all in the next video.